Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over your potential Gulf Coast Hurricane, which would be, if it were to be named a storm, Tropical Storm Laura or Hurricane Laura, depending on how intense it does get. It's going to be moving throughout the Southern Caribbean and then moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Then even behind that, we have another area of interest, which could potentially become Tropical Storm or Hurricane Marco, uh, if that were to intensify, and that would be hitting parts of the Lesser Antilles and parts of the Caribbean uh, within the next coming days. So we're going to be going over uh, some of the National Hurricane Center's forecasts, some of the model guidance, and just kind of giving you a, a overview of what you should expect from these uh, storms. And these are going to be occurring within the next about five to seven days. So they are a bit farther out, uh, but they do still pose a very, very large threat, mainly because they're moving s uh, through such uh, favorable environmental conditions. Very little dry air. We have have little to no shear, especially in the Gulf of Mexico area. We have very, very warm uh, sea surface temperatures, uh, which are well above normal, and we have a lot of ocean heat content stored below the ocean. So that's uh, pretty much a, a recipe for disaster over parts of the Caribbean and also into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and again, this is an area where you could see uh, potentially our next named storm. If you're wondering why we're already up to the L named storm, uh, it's because we actually had Kyle form uh, in between when I made my last video on, I believe, Josephine, uh, and when I'm making this video right now. We did actually see Kyle form off the shore of the Northeast. The reason I did not make a video on it because I is, was because I had uh, my winter forecast scheduled, and then I had to do my weekly forecast on Sunday. And also, it's just not too too big of a story. It's also not impacting any land at all so it wasn't worthy of a video uh, but it is definitely interesting we just uh, took another name off the list uh, so we're still uh, we beat that record and if we get I believe within the next about 10 days or so if we get another named storm which it looks like we will uh, then we'll break the, ne the next record and it looks like we're going to continue that trend so let's get right into it here with your National Weather Service page we have red flag warnings in effect in those kind of pink areas uh, throughout Montana uh, Oregon and also into parts of California. Heat advisories uh, scattered throughout parts of the Northwest as well as parts of Montana there. Excessive heat warnings in effect for parts of uh, pretty much the entire western United States. We have a big heat wave going on throughout those regions and they're still in the midst of it uh, and it looks like it's going to continue for the next couple of days. And then finally, we have, uh, I believe those are coastal flood advisories over parts of New Jersey and Delaware there. So uh, here is uh, the current five-day graphical outlook from the National Hurricane Center for the Atlantic. We have Invest 97L, uh, which is that one further to the left there. We have, uh, within the next 48 hours, a 20% chance of developing. And within the next five days, a 50% chance. And then we have Disturbance 2 uh, further to the right of the screen, uh, where we have, within the next... 40 hours a 20% chance of developing and within the next five days a 60 percent chance of developing and that would be potential Marco uh, which would be the one uh, that would that's currently named disturbance too. invest 97 L is the one that is potentially going to become uh, tropical storm or hurricane uh, Laura I believe now here is uh, the current uh, Eastern Pacific uh, and what it's showing in, ter in terms of the 5-day graphical outlook. No areas of interest, and that's actually something that uh, is important for development throughout parts of the Atlantic. When you have a lot of storms, especially uh, along near Baja, California, and especially off the shore of Mexico, like we did see uh, a ton of those uh, recently, that really slows down the Atlantic. Just because we have so many storms kind of clogging up the Eastern Pacific, that there's uh, that uh, you're gonna have ridges of high pressure that are gonna form throughout the Atlantic. If you have low pressure over the Eastern Pacific, you're gonna have high pressure over the uh, Atlantic, and that it, and storms really can't form in high pressure. So now that we're seeing most of these storms kind of die out, we have a uh, post-tropical cyclone Fausto there, and then we have Genevieve, uh, which is currently a hurricane, I believe, a high in category one, if not a category two by this point, uh, and that looks like it 
could potentially become a category three category four but it doesn't look to impact land too much but we don't have any areas uh and this is the five day outlook we don't have any uh areas circled uh for a chance of developing so that's good news if you want development in the atlantic and that's just because we're going to end up seeing a high pressure uh or h higher pressures take over uh the eastern pacific and that means that we're going to have lower pressures over the atlantic uh and that will in turn lead to some better chances for development throughout the atlantic here is the central pacific we have uh fosto there uh, to the right of your screen and then we have invest 90c which is uh currently has a 40 uh, within the next 48 hours a 20 percent chance of developing and within the next five days, a 50% chance of developing, but that will impact any land uh, it doesn't look like. Now, here is uh, the current infrared loop of Invest 97L or potential uh, tropical storm Laura. Uh, and that, uh, and currently we do have quite a bit of convection, but it is scattered all over the place and really nothing that is too organized here. So, uh, again, we don't have anything that is too organized uh, throughout parts of the Atlantic currently. Now, here is uh, currently where Invest 97L is, and it currently it is, uh, I believe, just east of the Lesser Antilles by this point. So we don't have uh, too much. Uh, we we still have to move throughout the Caribbean uh, for this to develop. Now here is the here is the uh, model track guidance. Some some of the model track guidance here, uh, and we do see most of these models bring this through the Southern Caribbean and then curving it somewhere uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Now exactly where that occurs is the big uh, question. Some of these models have this crossing over the Yucatan Peninsula and then kind of moving uh, westward that would make a make uh, a turn towards Texas others uh, have this kind of curving throughout uh, through Cuba and then moving into Florida and then potentially forming into some sort of nor'easter we'll have to see uh, it's definitely something that we have to keep an eye on now here is uh, some more model guidance for this and most of these models don't go far enough out first to see what they do later on but most of these models again bring this throughout the southern Caribbean now here is your GFS ensemble models and they bring this throughout the southern Caribbean uh, but the GFS ensemble models uh, only a couple of them go far enough out but the ones that do bring this over Florida and then uh, off the shore of the Carolinas. Here is the uh, current Canadian uh, ensemble models, and they are a little bit more all over the place. Some of these bring this as a nor'easter. Others bring this uh, for parts of the Alabama, Florida, uh, and Mississippi Gulf Coast, and then some of them even curving it into northern Mexico there. So uh, we have a very large cone of uncertainty, and that's why I currently don't have a uh, my personal cone of uncertainty graphic out just yet. Once this does get named as a storm, if it is to get named, named as a storm that's when i'm most likely gonna uh release my first set of graphics for this system now here is uh current invest 97 uh 97 l uh and we do have these are, these are some of the European Ensemble Model Guidance, and they have this, again, moving throughout the Southern Caribbean and then curving into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, here are some of your model intensity guidance, and most of these models bring this to a tropical storm uh, at some point within this uh, system's lifespan. Now, whether that happens within the next 36 hours or whether it happens within the next uh, 96 hours, that's really what we have to figure out. So that's a two- or three-day difference within some of these models, and some of these models don't even even bring this to a tropical storm but we'll have to see about that uh, and then four of these models actually bring this to a category one hurricane one of them bringing it to a category two hurricane so we'll have to see uh, with what actually happens and of course I'm going to keep you guys updated now uh, here is some of the ingredients for the storm now here's the, the Saharan dust now in those yellows the oranges and the reds that's indicating where we have some amount of dust or drier air throughout the atmosphere and as you get into those more intense shades, the uh, the oranges and the uh, reds, that's where you have even more of that dry air. Now, look where this thing is going to be forming. Currently, the storm is right around here, and I'll actually do that in a different color here. Uh, currently, is where the storm is. And look where this is going to be tracking potentially. Anywhere within this region is the current track uh, or potential track. And we have close to zero uh, dry air. And even if it interacts with some of that yellow 
right there. That is very, very weak dry air, and that really would not suppress the system too much. Uh, and added on to that, we don't have too much wind shear with this, so that's also not an issue with this storm. Now, here is your uh, sea surface temperature anomaly map, uh, and we do have above average sea surface temperatures throughout the entire uh, the entire. Gulf, Gulf of Mexico and also the entire Caribbean there. Now here's what that equates to in terms of the actual sea surface temperatures and uh, we have very 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 high uh, sea surface temperatures. We have uh, over parts of Louisiana and from basically from Louisiana to Cuba we have uh, sea surface temperatures of about 90 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, throughout parts of the Southern Caribbean, throughout this region, we have sea surface temperatures which which range anywhere from about 85 to 90 uh, or even more degrees Fahrenheit. So we have well above average sea surface temperatures, very very warm, uh, and that will definitely support some sort of system if it were to move throughout that region. Now that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.